In today's video, guys, we are going to look at some of the smartphone filmmaking accessories that you can get for the iPhone 14 Pro. Specifically, we're going to look at some of my favorite ones that I like to use that really helps me create better videos. Now, one of the biggest questions I get asked most is, do you need additional gear in order to get started making quality videos with your smartphone? And the answer is no. You don't necessarily need additional gear, especially when you're starting out. If you have the right know-how and techniques, you can do a lot by just using your smartphone. However, smartphone gear is here to help you enhance your video and make them look professional. Otherwise, they wouldn't exist in the market, right? So that's why it's a good idea, whether you're a beginner or intermediate or even professional to, you know, watch this video and inform yourself about what type of accessories are out there that could help you, you know, create the videos you want to create. Now, another reason why why you should consider getting some of the essential accessories is because they're relatively inexpensive compared to larger cameras. And by investing into some of these smartphone filmmaking gear, you'll be able to be more creative with their shots, but also create better looking videos. Now, by the way, if you're a beginner and don't know where to start or you're struggling to get the most out of your smartphone camera, I actually have a course called Smartphone Filmmaking where I show you how to create amazing looking videos from start to finish without having to spend money on expensive cameras. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love to see you in the course and help you out so that you can start making quality videos right away. Now, starting with the first item is of course the camera I carry in my pocket, which is the iPhone 14 Pro. And the reason why I went for the Pro and not the Pro Max model this time is because it's just smaller and also most of the gimbals can handle the weight of a smaller phone. Also the price, it's way less expensive than the Pro Max and it has the same camera features. Even though the Pro Max has more battery life, I still do like the smaller form factor. And one of my favorite features on this camera is cinematic mode, which is capable of shooting in 4K up to 30 frames per second. And in general, it just has better low light performance. We all know that smartphones do struggle in low light conditions. So having a larger sensor and being able to capture more light can be really useful. So moving on to the next item is my sling bag. This is the Peak Design Everyday Sling Bag, the three liter version. This is the smallest version. And the reason why I went for this one is because it forces me to pack only the necessary gear that I need uh, during my trip or my shoot. And it looks really nice. It's well designed. What's also great, which I will get into later, is that you have these straps here at the bottom, which allows you to bring a tripod with you. So I'm going to put this bag here to the side and we're going to start with our next item, which is a gimbal. And I specifically use the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, which is really great especially when you're traveling around as it's really compact and allows for a quick setup time using the magnetic clamp and also has a built-in extension pole which gives you a lot of possibilities to be creative with your shots and I especially like to use it to create low angle shots or maybe I need to get up high and if you're someone who's vlogging you can use the extension pole to film yourself and a additional item that I purchased is the DJI OM fill light, which is super bright when you uh, turn it on. You can change it between, you know, tungsten and daylight color. And this can come in handy, especially if you're filming in low light conditions where you need to film yourself. Unfortunately, you can't turn the light to use it with the rear camera. But what you can do is actually use it as a maybe fill light. Maybe you're filming something and you can use your other hand to just fill in the light. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't come with the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. It is an accessory that you have to purchase additionally. So the next thing I want to show you is the lenses that I'm using. We're going to start with the telephoto lens. This is such a great lens by Sandmark. Sometimes I need to film a subject that might be too far away that where I can't physically get closer. So this allows me to attach it on my telephoto lens and allows me to get around, I think, 4.5 times zoom. 
and also when filming in low light situations. We all know that the standard wide angle lens is the best lens amongst all three. And if you want your videos to be high quality, you can attach the telephoto lens onto the main lens to still have that quality preserved. And also when using a telephoto lens, you get that nice separation between the subject and the background. So that can be also quite useful. Now the next lens I like to bring with me is the anamorphic lens. If you want to create cinematic looking videos, the anamorphic lens can really help you stand out from the others as you get these organic black bars and also creates those lens flares in your video like you see in Hollywood movies. Now anamorphic lenses used on cinema cameras are very, very expensive. And it's great to see that you can have a similar look with your smart phone by getting one of these anamorphic lens. This is the one by Sandmark. And if you're someone who likes to create short films and likes to experiment with different looks, then I highly recommend you check out the anamorphic lens. And keep in mind that you will need a third party app like Filmic Pro or Beast Cam or Pro Camera App by Moment in order to de-squeeze the footage. Now, in order to attach these lenses on to your phone, uh, I use a case, which is also from sand mark but what's great is that these lenses also come with clips so you could also use it with any kind of smartphone so the next item i carry around with me is the dji mic this is such a great accessory to have and definitely worth the money i've been using it for most of my projects and it truly added a lot of production value to my videos and what's cool is that it comes with this charging case and you get uh, two transmitters and one receiver and the cool part is that you can use it with your smartphone. It comes with these uh, adapters as well, and I can just attach it to my iPhone and I'm ready to shoot. And it's also a great combination with the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, as I can use it as a vlogging tool. So just to quickly show you, because I find this a really awesome setup, I have the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, I have the iPhone 14 Pro, I have the DJI OM Fill Light, and the DJI mic uh, attached with the trans transmitter microphone over here and then I can just simply press over here to enable the fill light and then use the extension pole and angle it towards me to start filming myself and just talk into the camera so this is a really great setup it's small it's compact and doesn't require a lot of space I actually have a video talking about it which you can check out up here now the next item I always bring with me, especially during cold winters, is a power bank. This is the Anchor Power Core 3 with 20,000 milliamps. This allows me to charge my iPhone, I think around five times. I used to use the DJI OM4 that allowed me to charge my phone, but the problem with that is it doesn't charge as efficient as when using a power bank like this one. Also shooting videos on your iPhone drains the battery so quickly especially during the winters now um, that it's necessary to have a power bank with me. Now, the next thing I bring with me is a tripod. This is the one from Sandmark. This is the Pro Edition. The reason why I like this tripod is because it can be folded into a compact size and allows me to attach it to my sling bag. And it also comes with this spring clip over here that I can quickly just mount my smartphone to it. And the reason why I bring a tripod with me is because I either have to film myself or take a time-lapse video and especially when you're recording a time-lapse a tripod is really necessary to have and also allows me to adjust the position of the camera however I like to so having that flexibility is really great and also this tripod it isn't heavy to bring along now this tripod is a bit more pricey there are certainly cheaper tripods out there like the Amazon basic tripod but if you're looking for a quality tripod that will last you for a longer time then consider getting a quality tripod like this one now the next item i also bring with me is a variable and a d filter this is the one from sandmark and what's cool is that it has also a spring clip and you can attach it like this onto your 
lens and it covers all three lenses and the reason why you want to use a variable ND filter is to reduce the light hitting the sensor to achieve that cinematic shutter speed that creates that natural looking motion blur and like I said this is a variable ND filter so I can twist it um, in order to reduce the amount of light coming in. Last but not least is the motorized slider by Grip Gear. Now I don't always bring a slider with me, but I think for some of you that do a lot of product shoots or a lot of time-lapse videos, um, this is a really inexpensive uh, motorized slider. You can actually also use it with uh, smaller DSLR cameras. And this is actually also modular. You can take this apart and put it in your bag and it's really easy to use as well. And there are multiple functions to it. You can not only use it as a slider, but also as a 360 system. And what's great about using a motorized slider versus doing it manually is that the movement is constant and you get a really smooth looking slide shots, which otherwise be a little bit more difficult to do when using a gimbal or even handheld or doing it manually. So this can come really in handy, especially when doing time-lapse video, if you want, you know, not only a static shot, but also have that movement in your time-lapse. So yeah, these are the accessories I use for the iPhone 14 Pro that really help make my videos stand out from the others. And you know, in the end, these are just tools that help me create the shots that I need. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in deciding what gear to get for your shooting needs. Now, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Now, I also have a free smartphone filmmaking guide for beginners uh, where I mentioned some of the items that I present presented today where I show you some of the must-have items when you're starting out as well as other gear that can be helpful for your mobile filmmaking process. So make sure to check it out. The link is in the video description below. And like I mentioned, if you need more help, make sure to check out smartphonefilmmaking.com, the ultimate online course where I teach people all around the world how to produce quality videos on their smartphone. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find value in this. Take care and I will see you in the next video.